The time was the late 80s and everything shredder was cool. Every guitar player was trying to outdo every other guitar player, and I was practicing eight hours a day and absorbing every technique I could, except arpeggios. Why? Because they suck. All right, I'm being a little facetious here. Arpeggios don't suck, but I did have one problem with them when I started looking at them back then, and that is that no matter who I heard using their arpeggios, they all sounded the same. There was like no way to insert any personality or style into it. Everything I heard that was being used was pretty much a copy of everything else I heard being used. And at the time, you know, I wasn't trying to just play the fastest licks. I wanted to have that big rock and roll personality and score all the groupies. That's probably really not cool to say in 2021, but it was the 80s and I was like 20 years old. Fast forward to about 2010 and I'm doing a gig with my band at the time, Answer Infinity, and I've got these crazy complex parts in some of the songs. Stuff I worked years to get right. And we're in the green room after the show with a bunch of the other bands and the singer from one of the other bands turns to a guitar player from the guys that went on before us and says, you shred, dude. All the guy did the entire time was play a bunch of shreddy arpeggios that I'd heard a million times. A robot could have played his parts and they would have sounded just the same. I mean, it took a lot of technical skill, I'll give him that, but there was no like personality in it. My very frail musician's ego was not pleased. It was finally time for me to break down and learn these things, but I was determined not to sound like a droid playing the guitar. So I was faced with two mountains to climb. One was to learn the basics of the technique itself, and the second thing was to figure out how to configure it in a way that wasn't the same as everything uh, arpeggios always sound like. So the first place to start is with the most common basic three note arpeggios or three string arpeggios uh, that are done in triplets or sextuplets. And these are going to sound common and we'll talk about how to get uncommon things out of them first, but I just wanna go over the basics of the technique with you first because then you're going to apply that to everything else that we do. Okay, so let's use a basic three string arpeggio done in triplets so you can get the fundamentals of the technique down and the feel of it before we move on to any of the stuff we're gonna do where we try to use more odd variations. Now the pattern I practiced because it's very easy to get under your left hand is this very simple three strings, 12 G on the G string, 13 on the B string, 12 E on the E string, and that's all downstrokes, and then an upstroke on the G 15th fret, pull off, upstroke back to the 13th fret. And you're gonna do this with a click and do it triplets. So each click it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And work your way up in speeds a little bit at a time. Uh, if you're not familiar with that method of practice, check out my secrets to speed. I'll link that over here. I don't wanna get into all that in this lesson because it's a whole separate lesson. Now one thing to note with the pick, make sure that you're turned a little bit, not quite 45 degrees, and then when you're picking downward, you want it to be very smooth, not like you're plucking the strings, not this. You want to move down very flatly, almost moving your whole hand down, and you're really going to feel the effect of that somewhere around 150, 155 BPM, where it goes from feeling like you're plucking to that actual sweeping where you're raking across the strings. So that one simple thing, just practicing that, getting it up to some speed, it might take a couple of months, but that's how you're going to get the feel of sweeping down in the most simple fashion. Now I'm gonna give you four ideas for ways to use arpeggios that don't sound robotic. The first is going to be a piece of a solo from the United Divide's first release, I See You, and this is to use uh, compositional elements of the arpeggios or use them as a compositional tool, almost replacing chords, not in a real shreddy way, but well, let me roll the tape here and you'll see. Yeah, that's right, I said roll tape, I'm like an old guy. So you can see here, all I did was outline a basic chord progression. I had an E minor, a D major, a C major, and I just did the first, I could have done, but I wanted to make it a little more interesting. So it was the root to the third, and then the rest of the chord, and then the pull off. And it was that basic pattern, so it's partially an arpeggio. It's that downward motion you learned with the triplet. And I did it at a pace that was not shreddy. It was, again, a compositional tool. That's a major chord. A little harder to get under your fingers because of the stretch. Then another major chord. And this is the kind of thing you can do all over the place, just outlining the basic chord. You can do it, say, with an A minor to a B minor. 
So anywhere you would have a major minor progression, this kind of outlining the chords works and you can use it as almost like a classical piano part type of thought rather than just treading. In this next example, I'm going to show you how you can use weird intervals to make really cool arpeggio sounds, again, without having to go at really high speeds. So here I took what typically would have been something very consonant sounding inside a basic arpeggio like that and instead used this weird very kind of tense chord and made an arpeggio out of that which has an odd fingering to it and would be difficult to play at shreddy speeds but at the speed we played it there it's a very cool arpeggio and a very off sounding thing that I like anyway and so I had here I go from the 14th fret, this whole thing's in B minor, 14th fret down to the 10th fret, the D, and then I have the bar, 14th on the B string, 14th on the G string, and then the root note D of the major chord on the D string, so. And I have to use quite a bit of muting with my right hand and make sure my left hand is very precise so I don't end up with open strings ringing about. And you'll notice there that when I played a harmony to it, I ended up with a very weird uh, finger grouping as well, which is the 17th to the 14th, and then I'm doing a basic uh, A major. So finding these weird kind of layouts to get those cool wide intervals, that kind of thing where the fingers are spread out on single notes and looking for arpeggio versions of that can lead to some very interesting arpeggios that definitely don't sound like a robot. Now this next example is something that is not so much sweet picking, but it's still considered an arpeggio because of the intervals that are used. And here I like to mix things that would normally be odd times, but I'm still in 4-4. Four, four. So instead of playing like four notes and four notes, I'm playing three notes and five notes in the pattern logically to create something that's in 4-4 four, four, but sounds odd. Let's roll it. And so here, I'm employing the wide arpeggio-like intervals. Again, we're in B minor, and I've got the root note B, and I hammer from D on the next string to F sharp, and that's three notes, one, two, three, and then I'm gonna do five notes. So it's then B, D, F sharp, seven, oh, excuse me, nine, seven, 11, eight, 10. And then when I went up to the second part of it here, it's a little bit more linear and a little bit more typical uh, as far as the fingering goes. You have the 11th, the 12th on the B string, and then the 10th here. And that's your group of three. And then the group of five is much more linear. I go back to the B string, one, two, three, four, five. So that's more inspired by arpeggios and strictly arpeggio but still has a very cool sound to it and employs that same technique that you learn where you have to be able to go smoothly sweeping down the strings, at least for part of it. And for our final example here, we are gonna take those very fast robotic sounding type of arpeggios. We'll stick with the basic three string ones though, and I'll show you a way to play them offbeat to make it a little more interesting. So you saw I took a variant there of the, just playing it, continuing in B minor. So I start on the fifth, the F sharp, 12th, the B here, and then the D on the E string. And then it's just the pull off from the 14th back to the 10th. That same pattern as before. And the first time through, I play it right on the beat. The second time through, when I kind of zoomed in on it there, I'm playing it just off of the beat. So normally if it's one, two, three, four, one, two, you're playing on the beat. But here, the second time through, I started 
just after the beat, on the E of the beat. I believe that'd be one, two, three, four, one. Which when you're playing it just in open air like that, you can't tell, you need the background music to understand. But this can kind of be one of the most difficult ones to master because in your brain, you really want to get right on the beat with it. And you have to get used to hearing what the arpeggio sounds like, picking up the note, not on the downbeat of the one, but right after the one. There's definitely a lot of cool ways that you can play with this. That was just with triplets. You can do it with uh, eighth note or 16th note, 32nd note, if you're getting to that point, arpeggios, just throwing them all off of the beat. So I hope that made sense to you guys and you got something out of it. You maybe look at arpeggios differently and try to find unique ways that fit your personality and style of music for playing them. Uh, again, this wasn't the kind of lesson where we're breaking down all of the most complex arpeggio technique. That wasn't the point. I want to try to get you to use the things in your own way. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I get back to everybody as soon as I can. And hopefully you can use these things to make what I always say at the end of my music, some great music. And until next time, guys. Keep making that great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.